Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as usual on Tuesdays I have a few announcements and the first one is our next introduction to plant-based nutrition is scheduled for April 3rd at 9 p.m. This is the 90 minute program we do to get people off on the right start with the science and skills needed to change their diet. Uh, the second thing is the next advanced study session and we have two of them scheduled for April but the first one is April 7th and I'm going to talk about power foods for the brain and Alzheimer's disease. And the second one, which is on April 28th, I'm gonna talk about this ridiculous book, Grain Brain, that everybody wants to know about. So um, you can mark those dates on your calendar. And then the diet, it is time to enroll for the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course, which qualifies for 39 continuing education credits for medical doctors, nurses, and dietitians this year. So you don't wanna miss that. All right, so I wanna talk about first um, a subject near and dear to my heart, dairy products. It has been said that it is easier to talk to people about politics and religion than it is to talk about food choices. I found that with a lot of people, by the way. And trying to convince people to give up foods that they love even with significant evidence can be really challenging. And I think some people form more attachment to some foods than others. Like I've never really had somebody sit in my office and say, I'm so addicted to Brussels sprouts, I can't stop eating them. Um, on the other hand, chocolate, people get addicted to that. And another one, strong, very strong, bordering on addiction, I think is dairy products. Now, people are always looking to put forth the dairy argument in some different form so that they can get permission to eat it. And one of the arguments put forth by dairy advocates is that the problem with dairy is that we consume it after it's pasteurized. And these people insist that that's the reason why people have so many poor responses to uh, dairy, ranging from constipation and allergies and asthma and infections and that sort of thing, and that consuming raw milk is, and cheese is better, it doesn't cause the same responses and it doesn't pose the, health, the same health risks. Now, it's just not true. And a new study actually looked at this issue comparing raw milk to pasteurized milk. So I'll tell you a little bit about the study. It included lactose intolerant patients and people who are lactose intolerant don't produce enough lactase, an enzyme that assists in breaking down the sugars in milk. The participants were given pasteurized milk, raw milk, and soy milk. They drank one type of milk for eight days, then they took a break, and then they consumed another type of milk for eight days. And levels of hydrogen in the breath were measured because levels are higher when undigested lactose is present. There was no difference between the results of this test when pasteurized versus raw milk was consumed. Also, participants reported that there was no difference in the severity of their symptoms when they consumed raw milk instead of pasteurized milk. The researchers concluded, and this is a quote, these results do not support widespread anecdotal claims that raw milk reduces the symptoms of lactose intolerance. It just doesn't. So here's the bottom line. Cow's milk is not an appropriate, appropriate or safe food for humans, regardless of how it's consumed. It can be raw versus pasteurized, same result. Organic versus non-organic, fortified versus non-fortified, low fat, high fat. People are always trying to come up with some qualification that will give them permission to eat cheese. And there just isn't any such thing. Dairy proteins contribute to the development of many diseases and all cow's milk products have them. And all cow's milk contains estrogen and estrogen metabolites. So no matter how many ways you ask the question, I'm gonna come back to you with the same answer. Don't eat this stuff, okay? Now, on to another topic, and this is actually kind of exciting, at least I think it is, and it pertains to the way that uh, diet affects, diet and lifestyle choices affect gene and gene, genes and gene, genetic expression. So I'll just start by saying this, genes are important. My genes determined that I would be five feet, seven inches tall and have brown eyes while somebody else is shorter or, or taller and has blue eyes. Genes also predispose me to develop a lot of conditions that run in my family, and they are obesity, rheumatoid arthritis, and cardiovascular disease. Those are the, the big ones. But genes are not the primary determinant of health, thank goodness. Diet and lifestyle habits are, which is why I'm not obese, and I don't have rheumatoid arthritis, and I don't have cardiovascular disease. A recently published year-long study confirms that um, diet is the key. Subjects who participated in a diet, exercise, and stress management program not only lost weight and showed improved markers for cardiovascular disease, but also showed changes at the molecular level, which the researchers associated with improvements in their vascular health. And I'll come back to that, but actually the diet changed gene expression in these individuals. 
Now, participants in the study either had coronary artery disease or had risk factors for it. The intervention group was placed on a low-fat vegetarian diet with less than 10% of calories from fat. Actually, an, a low-fat diet for a change. They engaged in 180 minutes per week of aerobic exercise, took part in a daily stress management program, and attended weekly support sessions. There were 63 participants in the intervention group and then 63 in the control group. The results were amazing. The prevalence of hypertension dropped from 41% to 17%. The obesity rate, rate dropped from 60% to 37%. And the rate of high people who had high cholesterol dropped from 54% to 34%. There was a 38% improvement in physical fitness, a 9% improvement in body mass index, and a 7% drop in tri triglycerides, and a 7% drop in blood pressure. Meaningful differences. Now, here's the thing that was really interesting. In addition to evaluating the participants' physical health, the researchers looked at how diet and lifestyle changes impacted gene expression. They were able to profile over 22,000 genes and noted significant positive changes in 143 of them, most of which involved immune function or inflammation. Also, the number of altered genes, in a positive sense, increased by over five-fold between weeks 12 and 52 of the intervention period, which means that the longer the participants engaged in healthier behaviors, the more their health improved. So participants in the control group, on the other hand, they did not show improvements in their physical health, they did not show improvements in their markers, and there was absolutely no improvement in gene expression either. Now this study interests me for several reasons. It's rare that a study that involves dietary intervention involves the type of change that can actually make a difference, but this is a vegetarian diet with 10% or less of calories from fat, truly meaningful. And it's one of the few studies that's looked at the underlying biology, which shows that when people do this, not only do they feel better and their biomarkers get better, but they're actually getting better too. You know, there are all kinds of ways you can lose weight and feel better without actually getting better and sometimes making things worse. But in this case, everything moved in the right direction. So I'm hoping that this type of thing encourages more people to change their ways. And my gosh, we need more of this type of research instead of this reductionist nonsense that goes on with um, uh, the research community all the time. Actually, a comprehensive change in diet and lifestyle that uh, caused some really spectacular results in these people. Well, that's all for now. Have a wonderful day. Pass this on, as usual, to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you again on Thursday.